12 years, 9 states, and 6 countries. That's my experience. I've trained thousands in food science and knife skill training was among the favorites. These short lessons in knife technique are vital. Only if you want to eat better, cheaper, faster. It's not that hard. You just don't know any better or are afraid to try. Come with me now. These 15 minutes can change how you eat and change your mind about being in the kitchen. Welcome back to Kitchen Science and Common Sense. This is the second in a series discussing knife technique. We will be talking mostly about the techniques used for the French chef knife today. Uh, the chef knife itself is very common, used throughout the world, and is pretty much, even though it hasn't changed for a few thousand years very much, it still is the preferred method of, of handling small amounts of vegetable in a 21st century kitchen. Uh, a great knife, the French chef knife, and I want to show you a few of the things that will help you just to get started for a feel of the knife and how that can be to your advantage in the kitchen. The first thing is that we need to talk about safety. There's one overriding word for safety and that is control. You must have control at all times or you're going to start cutting meat instead of vegetables. We talked about having a good board earlier, but what we didn't talk about very much was how to keep that board stable. If we have a board without any cloth or anything out from under it, it slides and moves around. If we go ahead and put down a towel first and put the board on that, you see it has a lot more stability and it's not going to scoot around. A better thing to do, even though, is to put on a wet towel. Now with a wet towel, that's much, much more stable. Um, the more control, obviously, the better and the safer. Now, when talking about the French chef knife, we see that there is a curve there at the end. That's not necessarily for slicing things with the tip, although we do do that. But you'll see later on some other reasons that we use and take advantage of that curve where the blade does not yet touch the board. Okay, the, before you even touch the knife, what I want you to do is be able to make the claw. That reminds me of one of the kids' cartoons. The claw. Do you see how my knuckles are perpendicular to the board? Perhaps you can see them this way better. That is where the knife slides and rubs up and down you'll see that my the knife never leaves my finger. It's none of this chopping like this and trying to push it away from the knife. You just keep going and that stays right there. With pretty much every movement of the knife I'm going to show you, the knife still stays right on the fingers, whether we're chopping up and down, whether we're slicing, or whether we're actually using the rocker then slicing motions together. It still stays right here. The advantage of that is, is that I always know where the knife is. I can look away, I can do that, don't do that. But I can look away and do anything I want to do because I know exactly where the knife is and I know exactly where my fingers are. Um, so the claw, the claw, the claw. Now that we can touch the knife, we need to have control there too. First of all, keep your dominant hand dry. If you start getting liquid and stuff on the handle, obviously it's going to slip. You've lost control. The way to grip a chef knife or a larger Santuco knife is like in baseball or on a golf club. You want to choke up. The third finger is behind the bevel or the hilt of the knife. You'll see that my forefinger and my thumb are actually on the blade itself. Now, again, you're using the claw. Both hands are in the claw. Not like this, not like that. Both hands are in the claw. This keeps my forefinger up out from underneath the blade and gives me more control as well. Right now, we're going to be slicing and putting pressure on from the handle, but later on, you're going to be wanting to use a bounce, and that's where the balance of this knife is, is right here on the middle finger. That's where it is. Later on, we'll talk about that. But using the bounce of the knife actually gives you half of the work because it's actually coming back instead of you lifting up the knife. 
All right. We have the claw. I want to just show you some of the basic movements, but to understand those basic movements, I think it's important to understand exactly what kind of tool the knife is. There's basically only two simple machines here. One is the inclined plane, and you can see that as we start making movements, the inclined plane, but there's also a wedge. The wedge of the steel coming down together to a point onto the bevel and onto the burr, which is a little microscopic piece of metal that can flop back and forth. That's when it's at, the knife is at its sharpest, is the burr. There, if we're talking about a lever now, we're talking about the addition of a plank with a fulcrum. A fulcrum is where that is going to go back and forth. There's two fulcrums or two techniques that use a fulcrum, but they're in a different place in a knife. This is the tip fulcrum, and that's where we use the rocking motion, and we also use the slicing motion. Now, it's interesting to see that when we draw it back or slice, we actually have an implied wedge as well that's applied to the vegetable. This is the true fulcrum, but this is an applied fulcrum as it comes through. Let me show you where you would use this applied fulcrum. Uh, it's going to be on soft and smushy things where the outside is a little more hard, but the inside is quite soft, maybe even quite liquid, like a tomato, uh, passion fruit, kiwis, anything like that, uh, that has a relatively tougher skin than it is on the inside. Let me show you how that works. Now, I'm still going to have my fingers in the claw, my fingers in the claw for control, and I am going to slice it in half. Now, the reason I'm slicing it in half is because there's more control again. That doesn't have the same control as half does. You're learning to use the knife. You'll get over having full slices until you've learned a little bit. But for right now, I want to show you how everything can be have more control if you cut it in half or whatever make a flat spot and then turn that to where it is more control now with this here my fingers are still on the side of the knife my fingers are still on the side of the knife and I am going to use that applied wedge Still on my claw. I'm careful. I'm drawing, but I know exactly where my fingers are because I've been keeping that knife on my fingers. Okay, that's that one. I'd like to show three motions of using the French knife. These are not standard terminology, but they work well for teaching purposes. The first is the draw where we will keep the fulcrum on the front end of the knife and pull it towards us. The second is the slice, which is up and down motion, of course, on the actual knuckles here. And the third is the power tool, which is basically using the knife very fast, like you might have seen in some of the Japanese steakhouse commercials. Um, I have stripped the cucumber first. I'm going to learn most of these on a long cylindrical vegetable, like cucumbers or uh, zucchini. Once I've got that cylindrical vegetable split in half, I'd like to show you the draw. Now, every motion that we have, we're still putting the knuckles right next to the knife. Whether we're doing the draw, the slice, or the power tool, the knuckles are always right there next to the knife. Again, none of this up and down stuff because that's dangerous. You can do it if you wish, but please have a large box of band-aids while you're there. The draw uses the fulcrum on the tip of the knife, and you'll see that this is another applied wedge when it actually hits the vegetable. I'm going to put my knuckles on the thing and do exactly like it says. I draw. I keep the attitude of the knife the same. It's not one of those that's slow and unnecessary. So draw, pull my hand, draw. My knuckles move back just the distance of the slice that I want. And with a little practice, you'll be able to go pretty fast, too. Um, that's not the fastest. That's left for the power tool. Now, you recall how to hold a knife, I hope. 
the last three fingers on the actual handle and the forefinger and thumb on the bolster or hilt of the knife where they are actually on the blade. Now remember, the claw is necessary on both hands, not just the vegetable hand, but also on the knife hand, we're using the claw. All right, so now the slice, we've moved the fulcrum to here in the wrist, and it is up and down. We're still on the backs of our fingers. Now, this is important for you to practice, and while you're doing that, try to get to where you're faster at it. And this is what leads us to the power tool that I'm talking about. But you're going to get faster and faster as you do that. And this is where the power tool comes in. We're doing the exact same motion, except we're actually bouncing the knife a little bit and using our fingers, making the fulcrum here, but more deliberate and more speedy. So. Once you start feeling that, you're going to start feeling very comfortable. The thickness of the vegetable depends upon the ratio of the speed of the knife and the speed with which you draw your hand back. This is thick, and as you practice a little bit, you're going to find that those are actually very, very consistent in size, which is important in cooking. Size definitely matters. And if I want a thinner slice, I can either increase the speed or decrease the speed on my drawback. And we literally have nearly paper thin product. And that is the draw, the slice, and the power tool. I did promise you that I would show you what the potato peeler does a little bit. The uh, idea here is to use as little effort and be as economical as we can. Now, what you'll notice here is that I have a cylinder, and you'll notice that most people, when they peel a carrot or something, they're sitting here doing this number, and you can see how much better this peeler is. That's not the idea. The idea is to Start it close to the back of your board, but still with the claw, because we're safety, this will peel your skin just as well, a good one. What we're doing is we're using the claw, but we're spinning it. Can you see that? I'm using the claw, but I'm still spinning from one to the next side. So I'm going to use one I haven't peeled. And get it up at the tip, put it to the back of the board. And all you're going to be doing is wind up and start peeling. And if you want to go slow, that's fine, but then it's done. Well, those have been our basic techniques and how to use the knife and a vegetable peeler. In our next installment of Kitchen Science and Common Sense, we will actually discuss the different shapes and approaches that we have for different kinds of vegetables, whether they be round and long, or a shortened squat, or soft and smushy. We'll be talking about all of those different techniques on the next installment. We hope you join us.